Hello everybody, I have been meaning to record this video for quite some time, but it's been insanely busy. However, it's raining today, and when that happens in Southern California, just like the song says, things seem to slow to a crawl. So I'm going to take advantage of that time, and I'm going to talk about some of the color settings in Windows 10. Not just uh, the grayscale that you see here, but also the inverted, the grayscale inverted, and the three colorblind settings. If you are interested in that, then you are welcome to stick around for the whole thing. On the other hand, if all you care about is fixing the fact that your screen suddenly went to black and white, then here is what you do. But before I tell you this, just very quickly, one of the common things that you'll see if you try to look up the answer, they'll tell you in your video card settings to set digital vibrance to 50%. Mine's already set to 50% and it's not doing anything. The dead giveaway that this is not the problem is if when you restart your machine, and we're talking about Windows 10, remember here, but when you restart your machine, if the shutting down screen and the login screen appear in color, then it's not a video card setting. It's a Windows setting. It's a Windows problem. So if you have a color uh, screen when you're shutting down and when you're at the login screen for Windows 10, then this isn't the problem. And obviously I'm at 50% anyway, so it's clearly not the problem here. So we'll just minimize that guy. If all you want to know is how to fix the problem and get your color back, here's what you do. Hold down the Windows key, the Control key, and tap C, and your Windows, your uh, color, I mean, will come back. That switches the color filter setting that you have in Windows. Windows defaults to a grayscale, and that's why that works. There are other settings we'll talk about, but if that's all you wanted to know, then you're welcome, and I'll see you next time. If you want to know more about it, then please stick around, and I will show you how to, how to bring up some of the other ones. So again, Windows key control C, here you can hear me, you can hear me uh, tapping the C key. Right. Hear that? I'm sure the microphone's picking it up. So if you do that, it will switch to whatever color filter you have set. And there are six of them total in Windows. So we'll just make this color again. The easiest way to do this is just to right click on the desktop, select personalize. This will bring you to this screen. You can get here from the personalization icon if you just bring up settings as well by the way. But over here you'll see there's colors. Click on that. Scroll down to high contrast settings and you will see that the color filter is set to grayscale. By the way, here's the Windows logo key plus control C as we mentioned. That's how you that's how you switch it to whatever filter you have set up here. There are other ones listed. For example, invert yeah, that looks pretty nifty, huh? Right back to the days of the Apple IIe. That's what that reminds me of. And then there's also grayscale inverted. Gives you a photo negative, kind of x-ray thing going on here. And you may wonder, before we get to the colorblind settings, you may wonder why would you even have a grayscale setting like this? Well, you can't just convert randomly from color to grayscale. You actually have to do a palette shift. And the reason for that is the detail in the color image or the color thing that you're viewing needs to be retained when you switch to black and white. You can't just, I don't know how else you would do it, you can't just switch randomly to, to black and white. First of all, black and white is only uh, two colors anyhow. But if you switch to grayscale, you may have two adjacent or overlapping items that get grayscale values that are very close to each other and you won't be able to see them. You won't be able to, to distinguish them. And it's just like if you're doing black and white photography or working a black and white film, you still want to be able to see all of the elements that make up the visual space. And so if you are working in a black and white medium, or if for whatever reason it makes something easier for you to see, then you can make that change. If you remember the days of the old Atari 2600, that console actually had a dedicated black and white switch that would switch the image from color to black and white for those people who had a black and white television but it would do the change in such a way that all the elements on screen were still quite visible. So we have these three settings, invert and grayscale inverted. Here we'll just do those again in case you want to see them. See that? Windows key, control C, invert. This is also a really cruel, terrible joke you can play on somebody. Don't do that. I don't encourage it. I'm just saying that you could if you really wanted to. These next three now are color blindness settings. We have deuteranopia and protonopia and tritonopia. So just a very brief background. In your eye, you have, you have cells that are known as cones. These are photoreceptive cells that process color vision. Uh, you have red cones, green cones, and blue cones. Those are known as, um, 
L cones for red for long wavelength, M cones for green for medium wavelength, and S cones for blue cones for short wavelength. And if you have um, deuteranopia, this is the first one that we'll talk about. If you have deuteranopia, your green cones are missing. And this leads to a, a, a semantic issue. I don't know if if Windows here is actually referring to deuteranopia, in which you have an absence of green cones completely, or if it's referring to deuteranomaly, in which you have the green cones, but they are weak or they are mutated. And by the way, if you have deuteranomaly, the, 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 the um, I almost said spectrum, the range of effects that can have is quite broad. So you could have very close to normal color vision, or you could have very poor uh, green color vision. So I, I don't know what they're, are, do they really mean deuteranopia in terms of the absence of the cones, or do they really mean deuteranomaly in terms of the weakness of the cones? I'm not sure which they're going for here. But anyway, if we do uh, deuteranopia, again, this is green weak. It's a form of red-green color blindness. We turn that on. Um, you can see that it just saturates the reds. We have protonopia is the next setting, and that is a, well, I mean, protonopia is the absence of red cones. Protonomaly is a red weakness, and if we turn that on, you can see it simply reduces the red, and it re reduces the red pretty thoroughly, as you can see. So it pulls, pulls the red out. And the final setting we have for color blindness is tritonopia. Again, it's the same as the previous two. Tritonopia is the absence of blue cones. Uh, tritonomaly is a weakness or mutation uh, in the blue cones, a, a weakness to blue. And uh, I should also add that blue cones actually only make up about 2% of the total cones in your eye. So with, um, with tritonopia, there is difficulty interpreting any color that's at the short wavelength end of the scale. That's blue, indigo, and violet. You know the B. IV Roy G. Biv, right? Biv from Roy G. Biv, his last name. Well, because they are, because people who are afflicted with tritonopia or tritonomaly don't have the ability to process those short wavelength colors, then essentially their spectrum ends, I guess, for lack of a better term, in the greens. And so they are able to see green. They see green quite a bit. There is some difficulty interpreting yellow. And so if we turn that on, and especially keep an eye up here where we've got the yellow panels, we've got this guy, what is that, Hey Arnold, and, and I don't know who that is, and SpongeBob here, and these Lego people. But if you look up there and we turn this on, all the yellow switches over to green. Because uh, if you have tritonopia or tritonomaly, then green you can see, whereas yellow you have difficulty interpreting. So off, on, off, on. And so there you go, the three color settings, grayscale inverted, regular inverted, and regular grayscale. I'm going to put that back to what the default is so we can do this. And hopefully that helped. Thanks for watching. I will see you guys next time.